top story tonight, South Korean President Moon Jae-in has visited the southwest China city of Chongqing. This was the second and final leg of a four-day state visit. And for more on this visit, um, President Moon's visit to China, we're joined live by our correspondent Go Yun-fei. He's there in Chongqing for us. Good to see you there, Yun-fei. So President Moon chose Chongqing as his last stop in China. Tell us more about this visit. Hi, Zhou Yuan. It's the first time that South Korean President visited Chongqing, and the history is the main theme of President Moon Jae-in's visit. And after visiting the Museum of the Korean Provisional Government this morning, Moon wrote an inscription saying that the Provisional Government is the root and spirit of the modern Korea. And what's more, at his final stop at the Hyundai factory, he also wrote another inscription saying, uh, I quote, this morning as the incumbent president of ROK, I visited the historical site of the provisional government of ROK, which contains the soul and breath of the independent movement activists. It made my blood boil when I thought of the picture that my predecessors in Chongqing hugged with the Chinese people when they heard the good news that their motherlands were liberated. Unquote. Uh, the deployment of the anti-missile system caused a downturn in the bilateral ties between the two countries. Moon is trying to use a shared history of fighting the Japanese aggression to remind people of the two countries' long friendship. And apart from that, Moon also stressed the opportunities that South Korea could benefit from the Belt and Road Initiative at the Forum. He said South Korea's own new northern and new southern policies can work perfectly with China's Belt and Road Initiative in enhancing regional integration and shaping the future for the world. And now let's have a look at what the president has done and said today. On Saturday morning, Moon visited the former office of the Korean government in exile and presented flowers to the statue of his predecessor Kim Koo, an independence leader. He also had a short meeting with descendants of the Korean independence movement activists. The provisional government of Republic of Korea was established in Shanghai in 1919 and moved to Chongqing in 1940. That led to the formation of the Korean Liberation Army, and many officers of this army actually graduated from Chinese military schools. Before leaving the site, Moon wrote an inscription saying, The provisional government of the Republic of Korea is our root and our spiritual source. There is a shared history of China and Korea resisting the Japanese aggression during the World War II. And during his visit to Beijing, President Moon Jae-in sent his condolences to the 1937 Nanjing Massacre twice. And his trip to Chongqing apparently seeks to highlight the long history of friendship and cooperation between the two countries. Later, President Moon attended a China ROK economic forum and gave a speech expressing South Korea's strong desire to participate in China's Belt and Road Initiative. <laughs> There are several economic corridors in the Belt and Road Initiative, but there is one missing link, the Korean Peninsula. We hope to work with China to build an intercontinental rail network that connects the Korean Peninsula, China, Russia, Mongolia and Europe. Also, we could cooperate in the fields of energy, a cross-border power grid and a digital silk road to shape the future. Later in the afternoon, Moon finished his trip by visiting a joint venture factory of the South Korean car maker Hyundai. Gu Wingfei, CGGN, Chongqing. Yeah, President Moon left Chongqing about two hours ago for South Korea, and I believe he come home with great satisfaction. Back to you, Chu Yuan. Yeah, Yunfei, you've got an incredible river view there in Chongqing. Of course, it's a vibrant city. And talking about the outcome of this visit, what major achievement has been reached by this high-level visit? And how is it going to affect the bilateral relationships? Yeah, as a highly expected visit, many say Meng's trip to Chongqing is a trip of seeking routes. But his four-day state visit to China is also a journey of expectations and hope, especially after a two-year frozen period of China-South Korea relations, largely due to the deployment of the SART system. So Moon came to China with a mission to thaw the ice, and the result looks quite promising. Just as President Xi Jinping said during his meeting with Moon, there have been some twists and turns in China ROK relations, which have provided enlightenment for both sides on how to create a better future together 
on the basis of mutual respect for each other's core interests. And the two countries' trade also got thumb up later. Uh, Premier Li Keqiang and said China would like to further align development strategies and begin talks on the second round of the existing free trade agreement with South Korea in his meeting with Moon. And to release more goodwill gestures on Friday, China's State Council released a notice approving the establishment of three Chen Aok industrial parks in Jiangsu province, Shandong province, and Guangdong province. So all in all, at least in the foreseeable future, we could predict an upward trend in the bilateral ties between China and Aok. Back to you. Yeah, Tria. we'll wait and see where it goes from here. Thank you very much, Guanfei, for joining us live in the beautiful city of Chongqing. Now, Wangjing is Beijing's Korean town. It's home to many South Korean expats living in Beijing and also a popular place for social gatherings for many residents of the city. But deterioration of relations between China and South Korea over the deployment of the THAAD missile's defense system has affected business and reduced the number of visitors in the area in the past year. People there hope that South Korean President Mu Jae-in's state visit might turn things around. CGTN's Ren Chetian reports. Over the past months, the communities here have felt the effects of rising tension between China and South Korea. Now, with leaders of both countries looking to improve ties, a goal highlighted in South Korean president's official visit to China, we're here to speak to some of the people on how they feel about recent changes in diplomatic relations and what they are hoping to see going forward. Fewer people have been eating in Korean restaurants, and there have been some slight inconveniences for students like me studying abroad. Last year, tensions rose in Wangjing. I hope China-South Korea relations will go back to the way they were, culturally and economically. Hoping for the best is the general consensus in Wangjing. Most people we spoke to seemed optimistic about the future, but a sense of nervousness still lingered for many Korean business owners, who expressed concern about the lack of customers. Those we spoke to declined to be interviewed, but they said they were glad to see their president visiting China and that the two countries are working to restore their friendship. Relations between the two sides feel tense this winter, but I believe things will get better. The two countries were good friends before, and they will be again in the future. South Korean President Moon Jae-in began his four-day state visit to China on Wednesday. On Thursday, he met with Chinese President Xi Jinping, and the two leaders reached an agreement on maintaining peace on the Korean Peninsula, which include the unacceptability of war, a firm commitment to denuclearization, a peaceful resolution of the DPRK issue through dialogue, and improving inter-Korean relations. Ren Xuetian, CGTN, Beijing. To other news now, the UN Security Council has held